Hey everybody, this is Jill Williams. Welcome to my Tuesday session. Every first Tuesday of the month, I'm posting a video here to share some type of demo with you. And for, for this month, it's the month of October, and I'm doing a series called Small for Fall for the entire month of October with my membership. But uh, the first day of it, this, which is today, uh, we're going to, I'm just going to be sharing it with everybody. So Small for Fall is basically just a series of small t uh, little landscapes that we're going to do together. And the idea is that you can do some small pieces in preparation for the holidays coming up so that you've got some small pieces that are easy to do, quick to do, uh, and it just kind of gets you prepared for the gift giving season, okay? So uh, everybody's invited to join me for this first one. And if it's something that you're interested in, definitely consider, you know, taking a look at my membership because then you can paint with me every single Tuesday. So uh, for today, though, let's go ahead and get started. I've got this beautiful little white, really high key snow scene uh, that's just really pretty, really soft. Uh, something that we're going to do today that can just make it a little bit easier. I know there's a lot of details there, but uh, we're just going to simplify and do sort of an abstract version of this and uh, it should be pretty simple. There is a, uh, I guess you would call it like a, there is a lake or a creek or a river or something like that in the foreground. So that's why we're having that really straight line there. But um, you can modify that in any way you want if you want it to be more sloping or that type of thing. I'm just gonna kind of go with what's here in the photo and you can modify in any way that you want. So. Uh, so let's go ahead, I'm going to come over to the work area and let's get started. Alright, so I'm going to start, I'm just going to use my ruler to just kind of give myself a little bit of a line. My, my vertical page here, this is 140 pound uh, cold press arches and my sheet is just a little bit taller than the, you know, a little bit taller than the photo so um, you can kind of position it wherever you want to. I'm just going to give myself a little bit of a line and then just very lightly with pencil I'm going to kind of just draw the basic stems of the the tree trunks here coming up just to serve as a guideline for myself later. You're definitely going to want a small rigger uh, type brush or a dagger brush something that's going to give you a nice fine point so that you can kind of work through these things but I'm just using my pencil to kind of establish some of the major lines that I'm seeing in the tree and and then I'm going to fill in the rest with paint there's still a little bit of foliage on the trees uh, not much at all but we're going to do that with just a little bit of water misting and it just kind of makes quick work of of all that so I'm just going to kind of keep sketching here very lightly, getting these little tree forms in. And in just a second, I'll show you my little dagger brush. And also, I've got a, a little thin rigger that I'm going to use as well. Very high key, very soft, subtle color all throughout. And I kind of like the fact that it's sort of grayish purplish kind of there's maybe a little bit of pink happening in there in the sky I'm gonna kind of pick up on all of that as we go so just using a very light hand with my pencil um, I just want it to be very soft and just kind of marking in some of these major branch forms that I'm seeing out here And I've got another little horizon line sort of right here and there's some little branches or grassy bits I'm not sure what's happening down there but just a little bit is going on there so very simple drawing very very simple and I've kind of filled up the height of my page just a little bit more this is half of a 9 by 12 sheet of paper so it's a little bit larger than what would be a greeting card you know, if you're thinking about using some of these as greeting cards, this might be a little bit big, but this would still be a really nice size for, for gift giving. 
All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is wet my whole page to kind of a start, you know, establishing some of this background color. So I'm just using a number 12 round. You can use a wash brush, whatever you might have on hand. And I'm just going to wet the sky area completely. Everything in the sky. I'm stopping short of that little ridge down at the bottom. There's like some a distant little bit of landscape or a hillside. I'm not sure that's out there in the distance. And I'm just going to pick up the water um, back down here at the bottom as well. But I just left this little band dry right here. All right, got everything nice and wet right on top here. So, you know, the, the biggest part of this painting really is uh, just, you know, doing the little sketch and, and, and maybe just, you know, some of your drying time. Uh, but other than that, it, we can kind of work pretty quickly through this. So because I'm seeing that pink, that sort of pinkish, peachy color, I'm getting into my hot pink. I'm using Opera Rose. And this is very, very, um, you know, in my photo, it's very, very pale. And Opera Pink is pretty intense, so I'm keeping it really saturated. I'm adding a little bit of Quin Gold to sort of give me that um, sort of peachy, pinkish kind of color. And I'm really going to saturate it with a lot of water. I want this to be very thin because it's such a pale, pale tone. And I'm seeing that pinkish color sort of up high, coming across sort of midway behind the, the trees here. And I'm just going to lay this in here. Bear in mind that the watercolor will dry a little bit lighter than what you're seeing. So you can kind of, you know, don't be afraid to add a little bit of color. I've left it really irregular on the top and the bottom. I'm just going to let the water kind of carry that and just let it do what it's going to do. Now, while uh, that's just sitting for a minute, I'm going to turn my attention down here to the bottom. And I left this area dry on purpose. Um, I really want that pigment to really bite and latch onto the paper. So I'm using, so I left it dry. I'm using uh, a Daniel Smith color called Rare Green Earth. I just love it. It's a very soft, earthy, grayish green that's very transparent. Okay, so it r works really well in, in applications like this. So I'm going to bring some of this across in this area and just make my way all the way across. I'm letting it actually kind of blend in, or if you, uh, you want to think about it this way, I'm just letting it sort of kiss up against every, the, both areas right here where it's wet on the bottom and on the top. I'm just going to let it barely touch. And you'll see that the water will kind of take off just a little bit. It's really soft. It's moving a little bit this way and and that way. But because I left it really, left the paper dry here in the middle, it kind of lets that color stand out just a little bit more. Now, just because I want to, I see a, a slight bluish tone near the top of that. I'm getting some of my cobalt blue, just a tiny little bit, really uh, transparent. I'm adding a lot of water to it and I'm just going to kind of come in here and just maybe do a couple of little wisps of line just right across that just to add a little bit of a little bit of color and value uh, to the top of that area. It's still continuing to move on both sides and I really I just like that effect and so I'm just going to keep that in into my landscape. So now I need to just dry everything. I've got a great foundation, and I want to start working on the foliage of my trees, but I need everything to be really dry so that I can come in and do a little technique with my spritz bottle. Okay, we've got that dry now, nice and dry. And if you notice, the colors are going to be just a little bit lighter than when we when we started. Uh, make sure that you're adding, compensating for that just a little bit because the watercolors are going to be a little bit lighter when they when they dry. So now we're ready to kind of start working into the the trees here. So what I want to do for these trees, you know, these trees are they're so so soft and so I want to make sure I'm, I'm maintaining that throughout my painting and so the two ways that I need to make sure I'm doing that is a very light value and a soft hand with my brushwork okay so to keep those values soft we're going to be really transparent that means adding lots of water to that particular pigment to make sure it's really light and just kind of working our way through it so let's get started by mixing up our color that we're going to use I'm going to stay 
play with my rare green earth and the um, and add a little bit of purple to it there's just sort of this purplish tone that I'm seeing kind of a lavender violet sort of tone but but it is uh, it, it is dark though so I want to go ahead and just get my color mixed up and have it ready to go I'm using rare green earth uh, for this and I'm also going to get just a little bit of my purple I'm using Windsor purple just a tiny little bit and so you can see that's kind of pushing that gray green into that lavender spectrum it's still I just, I'll pull some of that blue in here too so it's just really this nice soft gray lavender kind of tone just like we're seeing in the in the photo all right so I want to keep that mixed up ready to go and I'm going to actually leave my brush loaded with that so that I don't so I don't uh, waste any of that all right so for up here in the trees to really get that soft foliage I'm going to take my spritz bottle and there's a little bit of a trick to this I do recommend using a spritz bottle like this from uh, I got this like in the beauty section at, at Walmart it's a little bigger than those little uh, you know finger style uh, bottles that are really tiny the little tiny ones they spray well but they make such a perfect even mist that you don't get really water droplets and these will allow you to kind of get a little bit of water droplet just because you're not pulling the trigger all the way in and it'll kind of make an uneven spray so these are perfect for that all right so let's get back over to the work area and I'm going to uh, start to use my spritz bottle to just uh, I'm barely pulling the trigger and it allows me to create a really uneven um, deposit of water droplets all over the page in fact let me hold it up for you close to the camera so you can see so you should be able to see see all the little uneven water droplets that are there okay that's that's what I'm looking for and the larger you know the larger water bottle is definitely going to give that to me okay so now that that's in place I can kind of start working um, I wanted to go ahead and get all of my color mixed up beforehand because now this all these water droplets are here and I just want to kind of keep moving and not waste any time with mixing color so I wanted to get that done uh, beforehand so I'm switching over to my little dagger brush uh, just because it gives me a little bit of a point um, still being able to carry a good bit of pigment here and I'm just going to come into my painting with this purple and I'm going to start working it's pretty you know it's it's dark just like I'm seeing in my in my uh, photo and I wanted to start adding that right in here I'm just following along with my drawing and if you'll notice see what happens when the the paint interacts or comes in contact with some of the water droplets it allows the pigment to just sort of take off and chase some of those water droplets and you wind up getting these nice little uh, fuzzy marks that really kind of look like the foliage that's still sort of clinging to the trees all right, so I just want to keep working and I'm keeping the pigment very light okay and it's definitely it's a little darker down at the bottom but it begins to get lighter as I work my way up through the tree it gets lighter so I'm gonna still keep this brush loaded but I'm gonna reach over and get my little tiny rigger brush this one's even smaller okay and I'm gonna use this one to uh, fill up with the same color but I'm really getting it wet I'm adding a lot more water in there to really kind of thin that that color down even more so that as I continue working the color is even lighter as I go and now I'm just kind of seeking out little water droplets I can see my lines from earlier my pencil lines from when I sort of sketched out the tree and I'm just following those little lines very gently very softly same pigment the same uh, color that I mixed up for the bottom half of the tree but I've uh, just really keeping a wet brush and keeping on adding a little bit of water to that little bit of the pigment so that it just stays really light and I'm just going to keep working my way through 
and this tiny tiny little rigger it really does such a nice job with just keeping the keeping the strokes really tiny so I'm just kind of working through I want to work quickly and just start sort of you know grabbing this tree if you get a little puddle of water I see I've kind of formed one accidentally I'm just going to use my towel to sort of wick that up And then I'm just going to kind of keep going here. But you can see that it's really giving you these really soft features, just like what we're seeing in the photo. So I'm just going to keep working through. And all those little water droplets are just kind of helping me paint as I go because they're just there to kind of expand and help push and move that paint around just a little bit. Okay, let me get started on the other trunk of this tree over here. So still just bringing some of that dark pigment in. It's a really beautiful color that uh, the rare green earth you can mix it with just about anything it has such a, a neutral quality to it and it mixes well with so many different colors and you can use it in with cool colors or warm colors it mixes really well to just create a nice variety for you it does such a good job with that Anywhere that it's wet, I can just sort of touch with my brush. Kind of got two brushes going at the same time here. All right, so I'm going to switch back over to my little rigger brush and start working in some more of these branches over here on this side. I'm just keeping everything moving, keeping it really fluid, really fresh. I want to make sure that all of these little lines that I'm doing for my trees are really soft, really natural looking, and the little tiny rigger brush really helps to achieve that. It does such a great job. If you're interested in knowing more about what my brushes are, I can share some information with you in that. And of course, if you're in my if you're in my membership, I'm always talking about these things and sharing information about everything that I'm using. All right, down here at the bottom, I'm going to add a little bit more value to all of these little bits down here at the bottoms of the trees. And if you notice in the photo, you know, down at the bottom, these trees, they kind of they just sort of disappear and they merge into this, you know, this background uh, color that we have here. So I want to try to recreate that as well. And so I'm going to do it by wetting the stems of the trees on the bottom, or the trunks of the trees here on the bottom, getting those wet, and and then moving some of this water out into this area down here. Just re-wetting re this area that we had before. And I'm just going to take some more of this tree color that we've been using and I'm just kind of adding it in here. And then I can come back and kind of soften that line. I definitely want it to really have sort of a soft look. I'm just using a damp brush to sort of sweep across this area really gently. And it really causes those tree trunks to look like they just kind of, they just sort of disappear. They mingle in the mist here, you know, with everything that's going on at the bottom of this whole area. I'm using my dagger brush. I've really dried it off and I'm just using it almost like a little mop, a sponge to kind of come along and maybe pick up some little water droplet areas that are a little thick or heavy or seem too dark or out of place. 
and in a lot of ways this painting just kind of paints itself especially with all those water droplets it really is a good effect for creating foliage that's sort of clinging to the trees and you can use it for even trees that are full of foliage it really does make a nice little technique to have in your bag of tricks for trees just going around mopping up any heavy water droplets that maybe have too much color or too much value so I definitely want to keep it nice and light up in the top parts of the of the trees there all right so let's dry that all right I'm going to reinforce just a few values that are in the tree trunks and we'll be done with this this is a, a quick little fun landscape to do and then of course you can change the colors you can make them cooler warmer whatever you would like to do all right so uh, this is that same gray purple mixture uh, with my little brush and everything is dry so what i want to do now i'm just coming in looking carefully at my reference photo reinforcing some of the areas that might have a little bit darker value and i'm just going to kind of work my way through Just looking and watching and paying attention to what's going on in my little photo here and see now we've got all those really beautiful delicate soft values back there and as I start to work some of these branches through I still want to be mindful of value and keep them light and so even when I put some branches in there uh, I'm just I've gotten cleared out my brush just tapping it dry a little bit and I can start right back at the top of that branch and almost come down with a little bit of water just lifting just a tiny little bit because we want those branches to look like they just sort of disappear into into the the mist there so all I'm doing is just adding a little little clear water right at the ends of those little branches and see how they can just softly disappear that way all right so now I'm just gonna I'm gonna work quickly and working you know having a little bit of a flick to your wrist really helps to make these branches look a little bit more natural in shape and so I just kind of come in and do a few double check my values Some of this one of these branches is actually coming down a, a little bit right there a few more little all right and so just like I did with the others I want to kind of make sure I'm wetting the ends of these branches so that I kind of I kind of want to lose the tips of the branches. I want them to be a little bit mysterious. Just a tiny little blot. I'm not rubbing at all with my towel. Just a little blot. There we go. Alright, so now I'm going to move over to the, the other tree and incorporate some value here. I just kind of want to have a little bit of undulating value these these they're not completely 100% silhouettes they're they've got some soft undulation of tone and I think that's one of the things that makes them look really interesting too all right so just working through my little branches here this little rigger really gets the job done if you're you know if you're a landscape painter especially you're going to be needing tiny little branches and this little rigger and my dagger brush together they really get the job done I've been using these for years and they do not disappoint Alright, so 
like before, I just kind of want to wet. This is just some clear water. Just wetting the ends of those branches. I really want them to sort of mysteriously disappear into the mist. Keeping this very, very soft. This whole composition is just such a soft, high key, very, very light value. Okay, just a little bit of light. I have really watered down the, the pigment on these. And I'm just kind of coming in and just adding a few. I don't want to overdo it. The trunks of these trees are still kind of dark in value compared to the rest of the limb. So I'm just kind of reinforcing that a little bit. And I think that's it. All right, so let's dry that. And we do have the little, almost forgot them, the little grassy bits down at the bottom. So I'm still using my rigger loaded up with, with that same color. And I'm just coming in here very delicately and adding some of these little stems. And just like with any grass, you want to keep it irregular, keep them moving around a little bit at different angles because grasses don't, they're not going to all just stand in a line like little pickets. They're going to they're gonna have a, a natural movement, sweeping movement. I might even add, I know it's not in the picture, but I think I like the idea of maybe putting just a few over there. And then that's that's it. That's all I'm going to do. I, wanna, I don't want to add any more details or too much dark value down there. And there is our little landscape. Just so light in color, so light in value, and uh, would make a beautiful greeting card. Or, you know, since they're so small, that makes them uh, quick to do, easy to do, and inexpensive to frame or to mat, you know, to give away as gifts. But that definitely makes a nice, um, a very nice gift, um, and definitely a nice greeting card. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I'm going to be doing several of these, you know, over the course of the month. Um, so everybody kind of got to join me today for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, you can definitely do this in some other colors. You can, you know, change up uh, the size and the shape. This was a, you know, a half sheet of 9 by 12 paper. You could do some smaller ones. You could even take a 9 by 12 sheet and tape off a grid making four quadrants and do four of these all at the same time since all of your colors are mixed. And then once they're dry, you could just kind of cut it up and then you've got four of them. And they would all be, you know, they're, they're all going to be unique and different because you've painted them by hand and so each one would still be a little bit different from one another but i hope that was helpful for you and fun and gives you some ideas for some small gifts that you could make uh, for the holidays